Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life and I'm here today to share my December projects. I've also got a few ideas about kind of wrapping up my Christmas sewing for the year that I'm going to share with you today towards the end of the post. So uh, share, share what I'm working on, a couple things that I have planned, and then some of those tips for, for wrapping up your Christmas sewing. Let's get started. Okay, so first, as I mentioned in the intro, first I'm gonna just share kind of some of my projects that I finished up this month and a few things that I'm thinking of for the rest of the month. But uh, then at the end, I'm also gonna share with you just some of my ideas on wrapping up my Christmas sewing for the year. So first is this Holly Jolly tree skirt that I just made. This is a great pattern. I've actually been wanting to make it for a long time. I will just kind of open up. I, there are three sizes in the pattern. Okay, so I made the smallest size that's included in the pattern. I also made the, the jelly roll version. And there is also another version where you can use yardage and you use uh, wider strips. But like I mentioned, I've had this pattern for a while and have really been wanting to making, make it. And I realized that I needed a last minute tree skirt last week. And this literally took me three hours from start to finish. And then I took it over to my friend and she quilted it up for me. Just a few things I wanted to tell you. I love the pattern. I uh, It's by my friend, Andy Knowlton of A Bright Corner. And uh, she has on the cover her Christmas morning version. Great patterns, super good diagrams and instructions. I did do a couple of things different. When you make this, you actually don't sew these two edges together. And my quilter said it was, it was kind of hard for her quilting because she had to worry about hitting these edges with a long arm. So she suggested that if you're making this, you just go ahead and sew it together before you have it quilted and then just cut it back apart after. It would make it a lot easier for your quilter. The other thing I did different is Andy's pattern had, she had you using ribbons for ties all the way down. And I just cut an extra strip of binding and lengthened it and used that for my ties. So I just bound from the top here all the way around to the other top. And then I used a separate piece of binding to do this. I probably should have cut this separate one on the bias. It would have been a little bit smoother. It was okay without it being on the bias, but just if you want it perfect, use a piece of bias binding for this inner edge. But really a great pattern. I know I'll be making more of these in the future. Oh, I wanted to tell you, I, I used this on a seven and a half foot narrow uh, slim tree and it was perfect. I think if you are using a, a regular width tree or you have a, a fresh cut tree that's pretty wide, you'd probably want to do the medium or the large size, but this small size is probably good for narrow trees up to eight feet, I'm guessing. So anyway, just a really fun project if you still need a tree skirt. I also did a blog post and I shared this and a couple of my other patchwork tree skirts so we can link to to that blog post from earlier this week. Also, just wanted to show you, I had, a, you make strip sets for that tree skirt and I had some left over. And so it, they're quite big pieces and I don't want them to go to waste. So I'm actually gonna cut some two and a half inch sections and put it all together. And I think it'll just make a little placemat or table topper. So I'm not gonna let this go to waste. These were the leftover pieces. So I'm just going to make something with those really quick. Even if I don't get it quilted this year, I feel like if I sew it together, it'll be ready for next year. Next, I made three more table runners. I decided at the last minute I needed a few more gifts. And since I already had the fabric cut, these top two are from the Hustle and Bustle collection by Basic Gray. And I didn't have any extra yardage of that collection but I used Christmas morning for the backing and for the binding, it seemed to work just fine. So I've got these two finished. I might actually keep one. I really ended up liking this collection once I saw it all together. It has kind of a vintage look and it's, the colors are really saturate, saturated. I also made another one 
just with my sweet water Christmas leftovers. Again, I, I had these cut up into charm squares. Uh, for this one, I didn't have anything really left over either. So I used the Christmas morning on the back and I actually used the fig tree green for the front for the binding and it worked really well for that. I just want to show you this. I, I know I showed it to you a couple months ago. It was a work in progress. And then I even, I think, showed it to you after I got it quilted. But I didn't have the binding. And I just wanted to show you, because sometimes I get a lot of questions about using lighter bindings. And I feel like this is an example of when a lighter binding actually really works. You really want the focus for this to be on the stitchery, the embroidery. And so I feel like the lighter binding really did the trick. Plus, I was able to use this print from one of our earlier collections. You know, this is something from 10 years ago when we weren't designing fabric. And uh, so it was super fun that I found this print of ours that I was able to bind it with. I, it just is kind of funny to me that I never would have imagined 10 years ago that I'd, you know, be finishing this with something that we had done. So just wanted to show you that really quick. I almost have it done. A couple more Christmas movies and well, it'll be done in less than one Christmas movie. <laughs> so just wanted to show that. And then I know I've shared this before. This is my bouquet mini and we actually just did a video on it. But the pattern actually comes also with a lap size quilt that's 57 by 57. And so I'm, I'm working on that right now and I really want this to be finished by the end of the year. I have an appointment for it to be quilted next week so I've got to get it done. But So I've just been hand stitching. I've got all my hexagons done and I've been hand stitching them to the backgrounds. Uh, I've got all my backgrounds cut for the ones that aren't stitched yet, but it's really been fun. This is, I'm making it with just a variety of our fabrics from different collections, and it's just been super fun. To, I'm just going to be so happy with this quilt, and I'll show it to you as soon as it's completed. I, I do, though. I have about four more days to get these hand stitched and get it sewn together this uh, weekend so I can get it to the quilter. And uh, so I'll probably be showing this to you in January and it will be all done. Okay, next, just a new book that I have that I think I'm, has some quick little projects if you're looking for last minute Christmas gifts still. This is called It Takes Two Quick and Easy Patterns for Two Fat Quarters. Uh, it's by my friend Barb and Mary of me and my sister. They are Moda designers and former shop owners also. Some really cute patterns, some cute little bags with a ruffle that kind of makes it unique. Um, uh, uh, some little bags and some little kind of tiny little ditty bag type things. Uh, there's even a sewing machine cover. So anyway, if you're looking for this, for, you know, small projects to finish up, this is, this is a great... I'll, I know I'll be using this soon. Okay, just a couple more things. We talked earlier in the year, I showed my double wedding ring quilt that I purchased, the antique one. And I just wanted to tell you, this is what I'm gonna use for mine. This is gonna be a 2022 project, but it's the From Marty Michelle template set. And I think for me, this is gonna be the best way for this. It, all of the different sections have individual acrylic templates and even for the curved sections. Uh, her templates are really great. I've used them in the past and so I will have one of these blocks, maybe more, but at least one I will have made and ready to show you for the January projects video and if all goes well, maybe we can do a, a quilt along with this. So uh, that's my plan for that. It, it, it's not going to happen before the end of this year, but I wanted to, to show that to you. Okay, something else I've talked about, and I've gone back and forth and back and forth, 
but I showed you these panels before, the Red Barn Christmas panels, and I've gone back and forth with what to do with these. Uh, this is also obviously going to be for 2022 Christmas quilt, but a friend of mine cut these up, and this is the pattern she used. It's a Cory Yoder pattern, and it, they are little barns. And my friend cut up the Red Barn Christmas panels and used, uh, and cut these into sections and used them in the little barns and used the Red Barn Christmas fabric collection for this. So that's an option. And I was just about ready to cut into it and get that started when I got a bundle of Corey's Beautiful Day fabric. And it has little little panels that can be cut apart also and Corey mentioned that these panels work with this pattern also she she initially did this with another collection but now I'm thinking I might make this with beautiful day which will be a, a more Christmassy coloring than what is shown on the color cover of the pattern I'm thinking I'll use this panel and her beautiful day collection and do that and I'll probably go back to another plan for these just just kind of some works in progress things that I'm thinking about for next year uh, because the great thing is that you can cut out all these barn pieces and have even sections of them sewn together and then just add the panels in and then this one this is another Sweetwater panel that I purchased. This is also going to be for next year, but this is one that you purchase by the yard. And so I feel like it's the same coloring as these Printworks panels in here. And so I might, I might actually try to do like even a king size and just use all of these, all of these, and this and then use this together with the beautiful day fabric. So anyway, just a, just a few things I'm thinking about that might also give you some ideas of things you can pick up now to work on for next year. If you're looking for last minute Christmas ideas for yourself or for others, these modern American vintage tools are absolutely beautiful. They actually sent them to Chelsea after a set for her and a set for me. Uh, I've got, I chose the Jack William and it's got a seam ripper which is beautifully hand carved. These are all handmade tools. Uh, no dyes or just all natural products they've used in this wo wood. Um, the crafter was taught woodworking by his grandfather and he actually uh, was furloughed, furloughed during the pandemic and started doing some woodworking to try to make some money you know for groceries so this is a point turner and then this is, is like a hair marker that will make uh you know lines on your fabric with you know without using a pen or anything but they're beautiful and he also sent a beautiful uh quilters clapper as well and then we were also sent some other, we talked about quilters clappers on the podcast. We were also sent some other beautiful clappers. I'll also link uh, this company and their shop. Beautiful. These are uh, different sizes, you know, the large size, the small size, depending on what you're working on. And they're also beautifully handcrafted. Another small business. I highlighted both of these uh, businesses on my blog recently. Uh, but these are beautiful as well. And he also has other products in his shop that are non-quilting, like little step stools and plant stands and just really, really beautiful workmanship on all of these that I wanted to share with you. And then last up, just a couple of thoughts. I really am going to finish up my Christmas sewing here in the next couple of days, but I feel like it's really important to leave yourself some notes. So I'm, I'm going to put these all in a project bin and leave myself some notes about what I'm thinking. I've also got a couple containers. This container used to have lots of charm squares that all ended up as table runners. I figure, feel like there's not very much left in this container, so I'll be able to combine it with some other Christmas leftovers and free up this container for a new project for January. 
And then I also had this bin. This was leftovers from all of the fig tree sewing I did. So these are the leftover jelly roll strips from the tree skirt. And then I did my mini uh, block of the month quilt with this fabric. And there's just little pieces in here. So I'm gonna go through here. Anything that's big enough to be cut into a charm square or a jelly roll strip, I'm going to cut that up and move it all into my Christmas leftovers bin. I actually have a fig tree red and green bin that I might just move this into. But anyway, that'll free up another bin for the, for the uh, beginning of the year. So I just wanna encourage you, uh, when it's time to put your Christmas sewing away, consolidate. Uh, if there are scraps you won't use, donate them now. Uh, save the ones you will use and leave yourself some notes for next year. So I hope all of these ideas were super helpful for you as you finish up your December sewing. Okay, so that's it for my December projects video. I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the projects that I'm working on, maybe got some ideas, if not for this year, but for next year. And also hopefully you enjoyed some of my tips for wrapping things up for the end of the year and looking ahead to next year. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.